after pressing pause for several years on the Canada Day celebrations here in Kiev. The Canadian Embassy has restarted their tradition with a formal gathering here at the Toronto Kiev House. If before it was an informal barbecue among the Canadian community in Ukraine, now it's a formal invitation-only event. We are here to find out what has prompted these changes and others in the Canadian policy in Ukraine. The Canadian ambassador to Ukraine, Roman Washuk, began the celebrations by highlighting some of the common traits which connect Canada and Ukraine. He also mentioned the strong response Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper gave to Russian President Vladimir Putin over the Kremlin's military intervention in Ukraine. The relationship between our two countries is based on a common commitment to values, freedom, democracy and human rights. But these intangible ideals motivate real and present deeds. For example, Prime Minister Harper looking the Russian president in the eye and telling him to get out of Ukraine. Another sign of support is on its way, with at least 200 Canadian troops expected to arrive in Ukraine this summer to train their Ukrainian counterparts. They'll be taking part in a training program which was already started by U.S. soldiers. The U.S. ambassador talked about the Canadian and U.S. support for Ukraine. And most importantly, both of us have the same objective for Canada over, or for Ukraine over the long term. We want to see Ukraine that emerges as a modern, democratic, European country, uh, secure in its territory and secure in its future. So great to be here tonight and of course great to wish the best to our Canadian partners. Ukraine's recently appointed governor of the port city of Odessa, Georgian national Mikhail Saakashvili, said that Canada will continue to play a major role in Ukraine. People from whom you can count and they are doing miracles in Canada. You know, the fact that Canadian government is so much into the Ukrainian issue, this is, these are these people. They are everywhere. They are in Ottawa, Toronto, obviously, but other places. I've met them in British Columbia, uh, other provinces, and they really are... They, all of them are carrying with them their Ukraine, and their Ukraine together becomes very big. So it's, uh, we'll see. I mean, I, I think that Canada will play a bit more a bigger and bigger role here. Canada and Ukraine have also been trying to reassure investors with an investment protection agreement and promote a bilateral free trade agreement, the details of which are still being ironed out. Basically, Ukraine is in, in the war with, uh, with Russia, but uh, I would say that opportunities are still there. And Ukraine needs actually help right now, so we're telling our members, and that's why Canada in general is very supportive of Ukraine, and Canada is trying to uh, sign a free trade agreement. I know there's still some questions and negotiations and little details to be worked out, but uh, besides the details, just the signal that, you know, during these very tough times, there are countries like Canada that want to do business with Ukraine. The Canadian ambassador confirmed that both parties are working on the bilateral free trade agreement. Chief negotiators are talking and uh, we are confident that we can reach agreements soon as our political leaders, uh, both uh, President Poroshenko, Prime Minister Yatsenyuk and our own Prime Minister Harper have, have directed us officials to make it happen and so we are all working uh, to make it happen in uh, the near future. Canada has been a staunch supporter of Ukraine ever since Russia's military aggression began in the country over a year ago. And as this Canada Day has shown, the support is not slowing down and no doubt will continue as Ukraine pushes forward with its pro-EU reforms. For Ukraine Today, this is Tamara Rosevan in Kiev.